Hey everyone, it's Vu again. I know it's been some time, uh, but I wanted to just record a video for you guys. Um, in the past two months or so, I've received a lot of messages on LinkedIn, email, somehow you guys found me, uh, YouTube comments, etc. And uh, I was reflecting a lot um, on my past uh, programming career and kind of how I got to where I am right now. And it seems like a lot of you guys um, are in the situation where you just started a boot camp, or you're just beginning your career and you kind of want advice on where to go. So in this video, I just wanted to break down sort of the things that I've been reflecting on and the things that I wish I had kind of known or done better or, or thought about in my programming career. So hopefully this helps and uh, without further ado, let's go. So the first thing that I wish I had done differently is I wished I would have started sooner. And this is something that I constantly hear from people. Um, I, at least for myself, you know, I, I didn't start programming seriously until I was probably like 18, 19 years old or so. And I know that it's like really young uh, comparatively, but you know, what was going through my mind was I had a lot of friends whose parents were like programmers and they started programming at the age of like six, seven, eight, you know, and they were brilliant programmers. And I was just comparing myself to them and thinking, oh my God, like I'm 17, I'm too old to learn. Um, therefore, I'm just gonna try to do something else, right? I'm just gonna, uh, you know, as I told in my previous video, I was like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna become a doctor. You know, like the, the age of programming where I'm like young and juicy and can learn all this uh, complex things has, has passed me. I'm over the hill, right? And, um, you know, no matter how old you are, I keep on hearing this uh, from everybody, right? So if you're 17 like me, you compare yourselves to the eight-year-olds that started. If you're 22, you compare yourself to the 18-year-olds. If you're like 30, you compare yourself to the 22-year-olds and so on and so forth. Um, again, this could be like confirmation bias, but I've never heard from somebody that said, I wish I started later, right? And a lot of the scenarios that people tell me is, it looks like something like this, right? So I'm in a job that I hate. I'm in a career that I cannot stand. I'm miserable every single day. Vu, should I learn how to program? <laughs> and the answer is like, yeah. I mean, like, if you're that miserable in life, like, don't you gotta do something to, to maybe change something, right? Um, but then the back and forth would be like, oh, but, you know, I'm in my ninth year of my, uh, you know, medical uh, degree. I just need one more year, right? And, and that's sunk cost fallacy, right? Because if you hate your life so much and you know that being a doctor isn't right for you, what makes you think that in 20 years you're just going to be happy, right? In 20 years, you're gonna be miserable and you're gonna look back and you're gonna be thinking, man, I wish I had changed career paths 20 years ago, right? So the first thing is, if you haven't started already, I would seriously look at, at starting. Of course, there are certain circumstances that make that you know, really hard or maybe impossible, right? But that's like a very small fraction of people that just potentially can't do it. And I, I'm, I'm talking like, if you're in the United States, even if you're like lower income, um, if there's a will, there's a way. There are scholarships out there. There's like ways to do go about it. Is it gonna be easy? Um, absolutely not, right? But is it possible? Yeah. So um, just recognize that a lot of the things that you tell yourself might be excuses and not really founded in like reality. So number two, which is related to number one, um, the reason why I felt like I couldn't um, be a good programmer is because I was comparing myself to others, right? So uh, this is imposter syndrome. Um, and I think the most important thing for you as a budding uh, engineer or a uh, you know person that's learning is to recognize the signs of imposter syndrome and learning how to deal with it. Um, I would say the number one killer of people's aspirations is, is definitely imposter syndrome. So what that looks like is you're going to compare yourself with others. You're going to compare your worst traits 
with somebody's best traits, right? So you're gonna look at somebody's work, you're gonna ignore all their flaws, um, and you're gonna think like, wow, this person is like so good, so capable, um, I'm a phony, I'm a fake, I'm a fraud, I shouldn't be here, uh, I don't belong here, I'm not smart enough to do this, I'm not capable to do this, I just wasn't born to do this, my brain doesn't work. You start making all these excuses and you start to close in and lose uh, your confidence. Uh, this has certainly happened to me as well. Uh, for sure, um, in my first few jobs, actually like almost every single job to be honest, uh, I've had a little bit of that. Um, so for example, my first job, you know, I, I, I was hired without a degree. I was hired and dramatically younger than everybody else. Um, I felt like, you know, I, I wrote bad code. And then when people reviewed my code, I was afraid that they'd find out that I was a complete idiot, you know? Um, and was I a complete idiot? No. Was my code bad? Yeah, it was actually pretty terrible. That, that part was true, but it doesn't mean that uh, I didn't belong there, right? Uh, just because uh, you're a junior and your, your code isn't great, it does not mean that you can't improve, right? The mentality that you need to adapt, uh, and the sooner the better is like, hey, I'm a beginner, I'm here to learn. These people around me might be better than me, but that's just an opportunity uh, for me uh, to learn uh, from people who are better than me so I can be better myself. That's the, the attitude that you should have. Once you start falling into this trap of, oh, I'm not good enough, um, then it's a really difficult well to kind of climb uh, out of because, you know, when, when you're not confident, it becomes so hard to learn anything else and to improve. Um, you just get sunk deeper and deeper and deeper into that. So um, definitely, I'll probably do another video just on this, but um, super important to recognize when, when that negative talk uh, kind of kicks in and learning how to uh, circumvent um, that mode of thinking. Uh, the third thing that I wish I had done more of uh, back in the day is I wish I had uh, asked uh, more for help. Um, so, uh, I was stubborn and I am still stubborn, right? And when I went through this journey, I felt like, no, it had to be me. Like, I had to do this. This was my, like, trial and tribulation. This is my quest, you know? Um, but in games and in anything in life, you know, whenever you have a quest, you have, like, companions along the way. You have allies. You have people that give you guidance, you know? Um, even just to make sure that you're going on the correct path or not. Uh, it is not a path that you go through, you have to go through alone. Um, and actually going through alone doesn't like give you anything more substantial. It's just going to be harder. It's going to take you longer. You know, why would you want that? It's not like at the end of this road, you're going to get some special trophy that says, oh, I did this alone, like achievement, a uh, trophy, whatever. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think there were times uh, in my career where if I just had paused, and I think part of this also had to do with my stubbornness and both my ego, right? If I had just paused, humbled myself, um, asked somebody for help, um, it would have saved me like months of wasted time because, you know, without asking for help, a small thing that I did would be wrong, right? It wouldn't be the correct way. And then I'd be building a foundation, sorry, I'd be building a building off of like very shaky foundations. Those wrong things that I learned early on um, then negatively compounded uh, into like a bigger Jenga tower that I kind of had to untangle uh, a little bit later in my career. And again, if I just had gotten proper guidance from the beginning, that could have been circumvented. Um, so definitely for you guys, hey, when you don't know something, ask for help. It's, you shouldn't ever feel um, afraid to ask for help. Just try not to ask the same question twice. Uh, the fourth thing that I see as a mistake and something that I wish I had done differently uh, was I wished 
uh, I had been more focused, right? And um, I kind of see this a lot. Um, you know, you're, you're learning how to program. And let's say you do, you do ask somebody for help. And then what they say is something like, oh, why are you using, for example, iOS, Coco, whatever, you should be using React Native or why are you using React Native? Don't you know the, the most um, coolest thing is Flutter right now, right? So you then take that advice or maybe you read like articles online that say that you should be doing things a particular way and then you switch around a lot, right? So you do a little bit of iOS, then you do a little bit of React Native, then you do a little bit of Flutter and then where you end up is you know a little bit about many things and none of them in and of itself by themselves are enough to kind of like progress you further or, or land you a job, right? Um, so I, I think that was definitely my problem as well. So I started with uh, C++, I think, uh, <laughs> in school. Like why would you teach somebody C++ in school, by the way? That's like a tangent, but terrible first language to learn. And then um, they switched me to Java and then I was frustrated with Java and then started learning C sharp and then her, and then like somebody was like, yeah, you should be learning Python and then started learning Python. And then what I really wanted to do was build iOS apps and then started learning Objective C. And then somebody was like, Hey, don't you know, like HTML five is like the, the cool thing that anyways, um, don't be that. Um, I really think that the biggest question you should be asking yourself is like, hey, do I like more abstract concepts or less abstract concepts? Do I like more like physical UI stuff or like backend stuff? I think that's the, the only sort of uh, breakdown, like decision tree you, you kind of have to make, right? Um, either backend or front end. If it's front end, pick something. Uh, stick with it go through it um, and you will be rewarded uh, for your focus. Number five on what I wish I had uh, done better was um, I wish I had embraced imperfection more, right? So what do I mean by that? Uh, maybe this is just me, but when I started to code, I was really trying to figure out what is the correct way to do something, right? So. I'd be looking and let's say it's iOS, I mean, you know, iOS, it's like, hey, you know, like, should I be using a UI table view here or a UI collection view here? And then I'd read the documentation on both and try to get an understanding and I'd read like the stack overflow. And then there would be like some nerd here talking and debating against this nerd. And then at the end of the day, I probably spent like a day or two researching and trying to figure out the right way to do something and like not do anything at all. Um, or, or maybe you're like writing some code and you write like two or three lines of code and you're like, hey, you know, like, I'm not sure if this is the right way. Although it works, you're like, hmm, you know, and then you dig into that and then you get like completely sidetracked. Um, th this has happened to me a lot. And this is something that I, I, I see happen a lot. Um, I, my general advice is if you're a beginner, if it works, it's not stupid. If it works, continue doing that. Um, you should take pauses though. You build a whole bunch of things to get it to like a checkpoint. Um, what do I mean by checkpoint? I mean, if you're trying to build like an app, build a single feature, build it from start to finish. Don't even think about if you built it the right way or not. Just make sure it works. After it works, take a pause, ask for help. Ask somebody to review your code and be like, hey, how does this look? They'll point out tips on how it can be better. Refactor, right? Rewrite the components that you need and then close that loop. Now you have a completely done thing. You should not edit as you're trying to write. This is like a general rule of thumb. And when writing code or like writing an essay or anything, if you're trying to edit line by line every single word before you're even finished, uh, you're not going to be able to complete things. So be less obsessed about doing things the right way and be more obsessed about making progress. 
And the very last thing I'll leave you with, uh, number six, is more of a, a mental thing. I wish I had better managed my mental and physical health uh, to avoid burnout, right? So, ooh, this is a story for another time, but uh, you know, when I was doing my second startup or so, man, I was miserable. Uh, I'd wake up at like 7 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> oh my God. Code into probably like 1 a.m. Sleep, wake up at 7 a.m. and like repeat that. And that was sort of the, the pattern that I used as well um, for learning how to code, just like grinding it out, uh, bashing my head against the wall. I wasn't like meeting friends, anybody else. I wasn't talking to anybody. I was like closed off. I had avoided like exercise, sleeping on time, eating healthy. And in retrospect, that was a completely wrong thing to do. Uh, because although I thought that that would be maybe the most efficient way towards the finish line, right? Because heck, I'm avoiding distractions. I'm doing like, well, um, it's just going to reduce your health, your stamina, and it's going to be much less efficient of a path. Um, this is like a, a marathon, you know, it's a long journey. And it's not gonna end with you just getting a job. After you get a job, there's gonna be more journeys. There's gonna be your first job, you know, your first um, review cycle, maybe your second job, et cetera, et cetera. And there's no way you can run a marathon if you don't like stay properly hydrated, you know, you're just gonna collapse at mile 10, right? So you really gotta understand for yourself um, what keeps you recharged and then make sure to recharge your batteries uh, and be really attuned with yourself um, because if you don't take care of yourself uh, you're going to fail um, you're going to get burnt out and I think that's why my second startup failed frankly because I got completely burnt out so anyways those are my six kind of tips for myself uh, of the past and for you as well, uh, starting your programming uh, journey. Uh, I wish you all the best, I'm giving you all the encouragement. Um, you will persevere. Um, thank you for watching and uh, you know, if you like it, subscribe and hit the like button. See you guys.